After watching the 1924 Stanley Cup Finals between the Montreal Canadiens and the Calgary Tigers, grocery owner Charles Adams bought an NHL franchise option to establish a team in Boston. The league officially awarded the franchise in November of 1924, and Boston became the first NHL team to be based in the United States. Charles Adams set out to build his new team, and he started by hiring Art Ross, a former star player, as general manager. Ross would remain a key part of the organization for the next three decades, including four stretches as coach of the team. After he hired Ross, Charles Adams asked him to come up with ideas for the team's name. He chose Bruin, which was an old English word for brown bear. The distinctive brown and yellow color scheme came from the corporate colors of Adams' grocery chain. On December 1, 1924, the Bruins team played their first NHL game against the Montreal Maroons at Boston Arena. Boston won that game 2-1. But after that early success, the Bruins had a losing season, going 6-24 and to finish in last place. The original arena is still in use and is now called the Matthews Arena, home of Northeastern University Hockey. The Bruins reached the Stanley Cup Final in 1927, but lost to the Ottawa Senators. This was the first Cup Final to be played for exclusively by NHL teams. After the first three seasons, the Bruins moved to the famous Boston Garden and played there for many decades. The team began to improve with the addition of Eddie Shore from the Western Hockey League. He became the Bruins' first superstar. The first cup victory for the Bruins would come only two years later, in their first season at the Boston Garden, when they defeated the New York Rangers in 1929, led by the likes of Eddie Shore and Dit Clapper. In the 1930s, the Bruins led the league standings five times in the decade. In 1939, the team changed its uniform colors from brown and yellow to the current black and gold and won its second Stanley Cup. With the end of the decade, the Eddie Shore era was drawing to a close, and new players began to rise for the Bruins, including Milt Schmidt, Bobby Bauer, and Woody Dumart. Their line was affectionately known as the Kraut Line, and, of course, this was before the United States entered World War II in December 1941. The Bruins won their third Stanley Cup that year also, led by the Kraut Line and still under the direction of Jack Adams. It would be 29 years before the Bruins would drink from the cup a fourth time. In 1954, the Bruins became the first NHL team to acquire a new Zamboni ice surfacing machine for their own use, the Bruins' original Zamboni was used occasionally into the 1980s. The Bruins also hold the distinction of being the first NHL team to break the color barrier when Willie O'Ree from Fredericton, New Brunswick began play for the Bruins in 1957. One of Fredericton's newest arenas is named in honor of Willie O'Ree. After toiling through almost three decades with no championships, the Bruins finally won their fourth Stanley Cup in 1970. That series featured the now famous photograph of Bobby Orr appearing to fly through the air after scoring the cup-winning goal in overtime. That moment has been memorialized with a statue next to TD Garden. That same season, Orr won the James Norris Memorial Trophy for the third straight time as the top defenseman in the NHL, and he won the Art Ross Trophy, the Conn Smythe Trophy, and the Hart Memorial Trophy, the only player to ever win four major awards in the same season. The Bruins won the Cup again in 1972 under the leadership of Orr, Phil Esposito, Johnny Busick, Wayne Cashman, Eddie Johnston, and Jerry Cheevers in goal. Don Cherry became the coach of the Bruins in the 1974-75 season, this would also turn out to be Orr's final full season in the league as his knees were deteriorating, as well as the last time Orr and Esposito would finish 1-2 in regular season scoring. The Bruins placed second in the Adams division under Cherry, but lost to the Chicago Blackhawks in the first round of the 1975 playoffs. After trying his luck in the WHA, Jerry Cheevers returned to the Bruins in 1977, but they were swept by the Canadians in the Stanley Cup Finals. In 1978, the Bruins set an NHL record by having 11 players on the roster with 20-plus goal seasons, 
but once again couldn't get past Montreal in the finals. Don Cherry's unraveling came during the 1979 semifinals against those arch-rival Canadians once again, with the Bruins leading by a goal in Game 7. They were called for too many men on the ice. Montreal scored on the power play to tie the game and then won it in overtime. That was the end of Don Cherry in Boston. The Bruins next made it to the Stanley Cup Final in 1990 with a new brand of stars including Cam Neely, Ray Bork, Craig Janney, and Don Sweeney. But in the finals they ran into the Edmonton Oilers and went out in five games. The 1995 season would be the Bruins' last at the Boston Garden. They moved into the new Fleet Center, which is now known as the TD Garden. In 1997, Boston missed the playoffs for the first time in 30 years after setting the North American major professional sports record for most consecutive seasons making the playoffs. The next and most recent Stanley Cup for the Boston Bruins came in 2011. They started with a Game 7 overtime win over Montreal in the first round and then swept the Flyers before being taken to Game 7 by the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Stanley Cup Final went seven games also against the Vancouver Canucks. After dropping the first two games, the Bruins rallied and pulled it off on the road with a convincing 4-0 win in Game 7 in Vancouver. After 39 years, the Bruins finally had the Stanley Cup back in their hands. In 2013, after a stunning come-from-behind win over the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Bruins won their way back to the finals once again, this time against the Chicago Blackhawks. The Blackhawks, however, eventually won in six games. In all, so far, the Bruins have six Stanley Cup banners. Also in the rafters in the TD Garden are the retired numbers of Eddie Shore, Lionel Hitchman, Bobby Orr, Aubrey Ditt Clapper, Phil Esposito, Cam Neely, Johnny Busick, Milt Schmidt, Terry O'Reilly, and Ray Bork. As the Bruins start their 93rd year as members of the NHL, they will be searching for their seventh Stanley Cup and looking to uphold a long and distinguished tradition of hockey excellence in Boston.